News star Gretchen Carlson dropped a major bombshell today. What is she doing? This could kill Fox News. Maybe you've seen Bombshell, the movie about sexual harassment at Fox News. I watched with some of the people who lived it. Juliet Huddy. He has detectives. Rudy Bakhtiar. Brian, I will not let you down. Julie Zand. I think I'd be freaking phenomenal on your network. And my husband, Doug Brunt. I feel like he's less interested in winning the argument than just having the argument. All three women complained of harassment and lost their jobs. Rudy and Juliet haven't worked in TV since. I could pluck you out and move you all the way to the front of the line. But I want something in return. Oh my God. That is an emotional ride. On the heels of the Showtime series, The Loudest Voice and now Bombshell, projects that are not ours and in which we have no stake, it was time for the real people to weigh in on the facts and the fiction, for them to have the last word. We sat down right after the screening. Let's just introduce ourselves so people know who we are. I'm Megan Kelly. I'm Juliet Huddy. Rudy Bakhtiar. Julie Zan. Doug Brunt. And all four of us work together at Fox News, and Doug's married to me. <laughs> and I'm married to him happily. <laughs> um, so we all have an intimate connection to the film we just saw, and more importantly, the actual story of, of what actually happened. First, can I just ask you, because we just saw it, um, for reactions to the movie? It's very surreal to see a story that involves you be told without you being able to tell it. Um, and things, they got a lot of right, but they got a lot kind of, not wrong, it but took just, liberties. it was a little weird. Um, but overall, I thought, it was, I thought it was entertaining. For me, it was incredibly emotional. It still is, as you can see. I'm just uh, shocked at what I went through and how it changed my life. Yeah, for Bombshell, it was, it was worse than, than that. Um, so that was my immediate takeaway. It was like, oh, this is it. Like, wow, you really let Roger off easy. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of it? I thought they caught the tension of the, the really tough scenes very well. I mean, I was a little disappointed The Rock was busy and couldn't get out of the scheduling conflict to come to play my role. I have to say, I really liked Mark Duplass. I thought I th it was good. I thought yeah. he got sort of your, your strength, your support, your kindness, your humor, your, you know, very strong, but maybe needs a little work, tennis skills. Um, he nailed it. <laughs> Doug just lost, I gotta go. Next time, honey. Nice. Good game. Trump, 16. Excuse me. If you talk to my wife again, I'll beat you to a fucking pulp. I, I liked him, I thought he did, he did a nice job. And I, I feel like I can't speak to the job Charlize Theron did because I'm just too close to it. You may have heard there was a dust-up involving yours truly and presidential contender Donald Trump. I just It's just too weird to see somebody who looks just like you yeah. on the screen pretending to be you. Yeah, that's Physically, yeah. it was there. I thought the voice was forced trying to get down yeah. deep and low, and I thought it was just a little one-dimensional and just didn't capture some of your humor. Oh, Siskel again, over here is yeah. very <laughs> tough. <laughs> He's very <laughs> tough. No, come but on. She, I thought she did a nice, you know, she, she's talented. and it was She's cool. incredibly talented. Why didn't she complain, really? He means the anonymous hotline. There was a hotline? hotline? Yeah. I did the harassment seminar twice. I never heard about a hotline. Because it's bullshit. So a couple of things I wanted to point out about the movie that were not true. They suggest that I had run my debate question for Trump by the Murdochs. That's a fantasy. I never ran it by Ailes or the Murdochs or anyone other than my debate team. So that was not true. Mm -hmm. um, the notion that Roger liked the Donald Trump woman question because it created controversy in yeah. a TV moment was not true. Really, really? <laughs> Roger did not like the question at all. Um, and was very angry at me for asking it. And at one point actually said to me, no more female empowerment stuff. <laughs> I could totally hear him saying And that. there certainly were no protests of me at the GOP convention. There were <laughs> other Sanchez, people protesting. Right, Sanchez. that was all BS. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, our I scene mean, never happened. That never happened, although it was lovely. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it never yeah. happened. But The notion that Irina Briganti did not plant hit pieces <laughs> on the talent is a fantasy. Comb through Megan's press. Find every single positive thing she said about me and get it out now. Roger, I can't discredit an anchor I'm paid to promote. 
that was the number one thing they got wrong. <laughs> like, like <laughs> Irina 100% would hit talent and did many times. Yeah. Um, but she was like the queen of hitting talent. Of she course. was anything bad you read about Fox News people, it's probably by her. The dynamic captured in the movie of what it's like to be harassed. Did they do a good job? I think they did a good job trying to give a realistic portrayal of what it's like. I thought it was pretty good. Something that I've dealt with in the wake of the Roger Ailes downfall, and people would say, did he ever hit on you? And I hated mm -hmm. how people would ask that question. And I'm sure that we've all gotten that. And it's like, you have no idea what it actually felt like. And at least these visual representations go there in showing you at, that it was much more than, I'd like to take you out to dinner. You know, I think this is such a powerful movie, Megan. It, it really puts people in our shoes, I think. And Margot Robbie does a great job as being the victim. When we sat in the theater just now and the elevator scene came on, I feel like we all cried. Like yeah. that elevator scene. I fucking lost it. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> the elevator scene. The ride to Roger's office. What was it about that scene that did it for you, that brought you to tears? When she got that call and went in the elevator, you're just like, I lost it because, we, you know, I, you immediately go to what happened to you and what, was, what her fate was in that room. Mm -hmm. Our experiences with sexual harassment at Fox all differed. Julie Zan was an associate producer in the Fox booking unit. I worked for Lori Loon, uh, who was a victim and a perpetrator uh, for Roger. And in The Loudest Voice, yeah. which is on Showtime, based in large part on Gabe Sherman's reporting, Lori is portrayed as yeah. an indentured servant, somebody who's been forced to service him sexually and then trying to get out of the relationship by offering him up a replacement. That's the word that's used. Yeah. yeah. Do you... <laughs> Yeah, because I was one of those replacements, um, you know, and uh, it's it's horrifying to know that you're just trying to do a job and um, to be sent in by a woman, you know, it's just it's just very very hard. And those scenes um, from the Margot Robbie scenes were very very close to what actually happened. Um, this is the first yes. time I'm speaking about this on camera, uh, and so I'm just no, it's amiss. emotional. <laughs> it's emotional, and it is so, yeah. triggering mm -hmm. yeah. to see it portrayed on on the screen. I want to convince you that I belong on air, Mr. Ailes. I think I'd be freaking phenomenal on your network. I could pluck you out and move you to the front of the line, but I need to know that you're loyal. I need you to find a way to prove it. I'm the bad guy. We should make clear that you did not submit. Yes, let's make that clear. Yeah. <laughs> no blowjobs by me for Roger. Um, but they were at, you know, but that's what he asked for. And I lost my job because I did say no. And you felt it was explicit. I mean, he, he, he left no doubt in your mind about what he wanted. He brought me in and he said, uh, Lori tells me that you're a rising star. And he commented on how I looked. He asked me what I wouldn't do for Fox. After he commented about my outfit, he said, tell me more about yourself. And I said, oh, I, I'm a shoe person. And he said, oh, I hear that um, women who like shoes also like lingerie. And then he said, you know, we're in this interesting situation because I can't tell you everything I'm thinking, but you can tell me anything that you're thinking. And I didn't say anything. And he says, do you understand what I'm saying? He had positioned himself in this chair with his legs open. And he wanted me to ask him to 
give him oral sex. And, uh, and I was not going to go there. And then my relationship with Lori turned very quickly on a dime and was fired a few months later. So. Lori Loon denied sending staffers to Ailes for sex, but also said she knew the private meetings could expose the women to sexual harassment. Julie was just one of them. I actually, before we were getting together today, went back and looked at my old journals. And this is an entry. I just wanted to share it with you because I feel like it's the same. October 10th, 2005. So this is half a year before you were in there, right? Yeah. About. And there's this one part that says, he starts talking about the need to have me open up to him and how he wants me to say more, but he knows it's difficult because we are in a hierarchical relationship. He wants me to give him permission to say more here. He also says, he would say more about how he feels if it weren't for the, quote, hierarchical relationship. I am not taking the bait. Good Lord. And same thing with me about my sexy lingerie and how he knew I must have some sexy bras. Yeah. I mean, it, and what you see in so many of these cases are patterns. Yeah. That you don't know is a pattern when it's being unleashed on you and yeah. you alone in the room. And you guys think you guys don't have power. Producers don't have power, yeah. you know, compared, compared to the talent. That's yeah. the truth of it. Coming to you from our CNN World headquarters, welcome everyone. I'm Rudy Bakhtiar and you're watching Headline News Tonight. Rudy, you were a star. You were the star of CNN Headline News and came over just like a rocket ship. We were all like, oh, it's Rudy Bakhtiar. You're so beautiful, you luminous, and smart. All of us did. <laughs> and then it was like shortly thereafter, you were gone. And I think most of the people in the DC Bureau were like, what happened, what happened, what happened? And for the first time, I think a lot of people will be learning, because you haven't been in the news that much, what happened? Well, I didn't accuse Roger. Yeah. I could have, because obviously he spoke to me the same way he spoke to most women in his office, and he did call me to his office a couple times. But I, my case was against uh, Brian Wilson. Brian Wilson was an anchor who had just been promoted to head of the Washington, DC Bureau. He denied Rudy's charges. All I want from you, Rudy, is to see the inside of your hotel room. God damn it. That's all it's going to take. Don't react. Make it your fault. Brian, if I've done anything to make you think I feel that way about you, I apologize. Friends. We're friends. The scene, it really happened that way. I mean, the words in my head were not <laughs> accurate. But it really did. That's exactly what happened to me. What resonated with me was the, the, the thoughts like, oh, shit. You know, like, oh, God, like, get back that to the job. Blame yourself. Blame, blame. Like, just the, in the moment, how, how much you bargain, like, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. I can, find, I can find an off ramp. You know, I can get out of bounds. And I can still save it and, I and, until, you, until save you, it. you cannot save it. I was trying to save it. We have a great professional vibe. Now sell it. I just don't do that. I've never had to do that for a job. I know, I know. You know I'd kill for DC. But there's no way I'm showing you my hotel room. This is gonna ruin my career. Well, now I feel like a creep. No. No, you're so not. A fucking creep. That was the end of me. That was the last time I was in DC for Fox News. He actually took me off his show the next day. He was still an anchor then after I said no. And then everyone would tell you, don't complain about you know, mm -hmm. sexual harassment because you'll lose your job. I didn't think it would happen, but it was immediate. Mm -hmm. As soon as I complained, I lost my job. It just seemed wrong that just not showing someone my hotel room and the rest that went with it, my whole career tanked. Julia, you were such a star on Fox. Oh, thanks. And I used to watch you on The O'Reilly Factor, and you just have this charm you've got the if factor on television you do you you would sit across from him and you'd call him william and it was a fun dynamic and i loved seeing you do your thing i i was always rooting for you way back in the stone age when i was growing up in levittown okay did they have electricity back then they had uh, horse uh, carried buggies uh -huh. and all of that right. um, i remember first learning that you were a me too victim mm -hmm. right and, and o'reilly was the accused and thinking holy shit yeah, holy shit, she's never gonna work on television again, which is pretty much the case. Do you wanna say and can you say what happened with him? 
um, you know, phone calls at home, random, weird things, and you know, just talk for a couple seconds, okay. And then it slowly proceeded to the, wait, what's he, like, there's some weird sound going, and I'm like listening going, what the hell? And then I started realizing, oh my God, he's, he's, you know, taking care of himself. He called me one day when I actually was over at my mother's apartment. I put him on speakerphone, and I'm like, and she, we're both going like, She's like, I'm so you know, and it was just this. Most... Are you saying your mother heard yes. on speakerphone O'Reilly pleasuring yes. himself? Yes, I am. He says, you know, all of his accusers engaged in consensual affairs. Uh huh. You know, that's yeah, no. that's his line. No. I ended up losing everything. I couldn't get a job, and I lost my house. And it's just, it's very upsetting to know that your, your entire, a giant part of you has literally been taken away. And I loved my job and I loved television. That's all yeah. I ever wanted to do. I do think we have to talk about the spin, the infamous spin inside of Ailes' office. That scene was a very real scene. It was very powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. Did you have to do it? Did you ever have to do the spin? He asked me to get up and turn around and I didn't do it. I didn't get up and turn around, but he did ask me. I was asked to twirl and I did it. Did you ever? Um, he never did the twirl thing to me. He would say, let me just turn around, let me see your ass. You're, you're too skinny, gain some weight, that kind of stuff. Did he ask you? So I was asked to do the spin. Yeah. And God help me, I did it. Fucking A. I know people think it's like, oh, you had to spin around. But I remember feeling like I put myself through school I was offered a partnership at Jones Day, one of the best law firms in the world. I argued before federal courts of appeal all over the nation. I came here, I'm covering the United States Supreme Court. I graduated with honors from all of my programs and now he wants me to twirl. And I did it. I just like, if you don't get how demeaning that is, I can't help you. Like in retrospect, I'd give anything if I had said no. Ailes began harassing me at the start of my career. At first, it was a mix of professional advice and sexual innuendo. If you look back at these journal entries, it's like he said something weird. I'm not sure what to make of it. And then you, you see the next meeting and it's he said more things about my lingerie. He said more things about how he'd like to see pictures of me naked. I now have no doubt that Roger Ailes is hitting on me. I feel very much like the woman in cases I used to read, wanting it to stop but feeling powerless to ensure its end. Amazing. So this is the entry on the day of the scene portrayed in the movie where it culminated in him attempting to actually kiss me three times in his office. It was Friday, January 27, 2006 is the day of the entry. I was in his office. We were hugging goodbye. He kept holding my arms, looking into my eyes, and then he kissed me on the lips. His lips were wet and he smelled like alcohol. So awkward. So fucking awkward is what it says. <laughs> I wanted to run out of there. I made it over to the door to leave. He asked me when my contract is up. In 18 months, I told him. His response was to come over and try to kiss me a third time. Nightmare, I write. And then I talk about how he was the most powerful man in news and how this part um, I'm afraid. He's always telling me about how he doesn't like to fight, but when he does, he fights to kill. You know, the scenes portrayed of me in the movie are when I, I did have power, Yeah. you know? But when I went through it with Ailes, I was a second year reporter. And by the way, just for the record, not that it matters, but when he was harassing me, I was dressed like a lawyer. <laughs> I had my long jackets and my bad shoes and my bad hair. <laughs> You know, I really hate when people talk about like, what was she wearing? Trust me, when I was getting harassed, I, I looked basically like a man and he was still coming after me. So it doesn't matter what you're wearing, right? It's about power, it's about power. In 2006, I did complain to a superior about Ailes' advances. This person vouched for him and said, it's, it's okay, like, please don't sink him. You know, he's just going through a rough time. He's a good man. He's having a marital difficulty. Just ignore him and it'll go away. But, I, I remember that period because 
you got that feedback from the from the supervisor saying the boss is an unhappily married guy and he's a little infatuated he did something inappropriate he knows it it's not going to happen again he's in new york you're in dc keep your head down it blows over and so i did avoid him and he did lay off me and then there were years of a good working yeah. relationship and we had dinner with yales's many times. In the summer of 2016, Gretchen Carlson went public with her allegations against Roger Ailes. It was one of those things where you're like, I don't, I don't know what I believe. The truth is she didn't have a lot of allies in the building. And Ailes, despite his flaws, was capable of generosity and loyalty. Roger made our careers. He did take care of you and he took care of me. And there were so many times when, when I really felt like, man, this He's more like a dad to me than my own father. I couldn't agree more. He was the first to sort of stand up and say, I got you, I got your back. And so your instincts were not at all to say, I don't have his back. But when I heard that Ailes had managed to limit the investigation to just a few employees, I decided to come forward. I called Lachlan Murdoch and said, there needs to be a real investigation. That was what I wanted, a real investigation. Not baloney, not internal, not five people who worked directly with Gretchen, a real investigation, and to their credit, they did it. Lachlan, in my experience, was this, always a stand-up guy and, and immediately did the right thing when I called him, immediately. And his first words to me after I told him what happened to me were, I'm sorry. The Murdochs hired outside attorneys Paul Weiss to look into the allegations against Ailes. I met with investigators thinking it would be confidential but my name was leaked to the press. Megan Kelly says Ailes sexually harassed her repeatedly starting in 2005. I just have to say something is that when there was the leak that you did talk to Paul Weiss and I just texted you before the Me Too movement happened, I just said, Megan, Me Too, it's why I left Fox. I hadn't told anyone that in, 10, in 11 years. Uh, and that was the beginning of it for me, that it was okay because you did it. I was in Cleveland for the Republican National Convention. None of my colleagues was speaking to me. They were, it, 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 my name had been leaked against my will and I felt completely isolated in my Cleveland hotel room. And my phone lit up with that message from you that said me too. We had never talked about it. Yeah. And it was an oasis in the storm. You know, you, you think I did something for you, you did something for me. Just those little moments of solidarity matter. So much, so much. So can we talk about the scene in the movie where they have the, the Kayla character find out that I was harassed, you know, when I was young in my career. And essentially she, she blames her harassment on me. Did you think what your silence would mean? For us, the rest of us? Roger is not my fault. I don't get you, I, you're, you have power. Why are you still playing by old rules? You're Megan Kelly. Look around, Snowflake. How do you think I succeeded? How do you think a woman gets a primetime Fox show? Bullshit. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. When I watched that scene, I immediately thought, this is shameful because it's unfactual. And it is victim shaming. And if this is a movie about sexual harassment, this is sending the wrong message. Yeah. And that is what they don't have right in this film or in the miniseries, is that you were just a real support system. And I know that it wasn't just me. It was no. a lot of other people. Me too. I mean, the Me Too movement came out of this. And you were one of the pivotal parts of that. If you had burned your star, you know, in 2006, 2007, like I did, we wouldn't be here today. We've moved into a place where we're now talking about it. Well, it's funny because I look at the Me Too movement, you know, and, and at no point in my view did victim, you know, number 17 blame her harassment on victims one through 16. You know, I just, I don't, that's the, not the way this movement has shaken out. And so part of me, I saw that scene, I'm like, that was written by a man. Yeah, yeah, that, I was that's to say. But Doug asked me, you know, would you keep, would you take that scene out of the movie if you could? And I said no. Because the truth is that I've looked back on my own life, my own, every moment from that moment forward, and I do wish I had done more. Even though I was powerless, even though it, it would have been a suicidal move for me career wise. What if I had just said, screw it, you know, I, I'll go back to practicing law. 
you know, I don't need to have a career in this industry. What if, what if I had thrown myself in the fire back then? You know, like, maybe that wouldn't have happened to you. No, I mean, it was no, really. so crazy. Because A, it would have no. done nothing. You would have blown yourself up for nothing and it would not have been but a blip. I think that shows, it shows a reality. I mean, that's what we all go through. That's why some of us <laughs> kept our mouths shut about things. It really needs to be made very clear that even though Margot Robbie's character walked off and, you know, throwing her away her thing, she probably never got a job again, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know? Or and she's like, what, what'll, what will it be like at the next place? And, right. I mean, I can tell you, having gone from Fox to NBC, it's going to be very much like the last place. The one thing I really want to say is Janice Dean. We're close. She's godmother to my son, and I am godmother to her son. And she is the meteorologist at Fox News. Janice Dean, the weather machine. I'm here, and I've got good news Excellent. for the weekend in the weather department. Janice Dean did not get her due in this movie. With respect to the filmmakers, they included her, and I appreciate that. But if, if you could only know the risks she took to, to make sure justice was done. She had been harassed by Ailes on her job interview. She kept it secret for a long time. Over the years, we got to know each other. So I did know that Janice had a story and I had a story. The long and the short of it is, the, the Gretchen lawsuit comes in, and, it, and Janice and I started to go try f to find women, for sure we did. But Janice was the one who everyone would speak to. She was in a non-threatening role. She was the meteorologist. Mm -hmm. And so women would speak to Janice, you know, women who I didn't know would go speak to her and Janice would say, it's safe to talk to Paul Weiss. You know, Megan's speaking to them and I am speaking to them and you can do it too. And for her to do that, I mean, she 100% thought, as did we all, that Roger was going to survive this challenge. 100% we thought he was gonna survive. And for me, I thought, okay, I can get another job. But Janice, she's worried, right? She's scared. Yeah, oh, I get it. She had me. a full panic attack the night before she went in to speak with Paul Weiss. But she did it. Yeah. She, she went in there. And so did many others who are just like Janice, who, whose faces you'll never see on the big screen and names you'll never know, but who found the courage to go into that law firm and tell their stories believing he would survive. Mm -hmm. That's who I think of when I watch the movie, you know? I think about them. Like, it was scary as hell. Blockbuster shakeup at Fox News after 20 years as the network's chairman this morning, Roger Ailes is out. Let's talk about the result because Ailes did walk out with tens of millions of dollars, um, the payout on his contract. So did the punishment fit the crime? No. Mm. I got $105,000. And, you know, he created a giant profit machine uh, that was rewarded and... This is what our corporate system looks like right now, and it's an atrocity. He should have been fired for cause, uh, and it was a cowardly move to give him $40 million. I believe that the punishment did fit the crime. I, you know, money is not everything. He was so embarrassed and so, um, they, his life was ruined. So I do, you know, and so what they gave him money? They took away his power. What do you think, Juliet? What we don't know at this point is how much Bill O'Reilly will leave with in severance. Many speculating this morning it could be in the ballpark of... He walked away with zillions of dollars and I lost my house and, 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 ever, and lots of other things too. So no, I, and I am, yes, I am bitter. <laughs> I've got that. <laughs> bitter but I move, I move past it, but like just in this moment, I'm bitter. That bitterness can go both ways. Some believe the Me Too movement has prioritized firings over fairness. Our panel was all for due process. I think that there's room for proportionality in the Me Too movement. I actually don't happen to be one of those people who believes in the quote, believe all women. Mm -hmm. Some That's women true. lie. Yeah. Trust me, I practiced law for 10 years. Some people make it up. Most don't, but some do. Mm -hmm. And guys deserve due process and they deserve skeptical assessment. Um, respectful, but skeptical. That's how we do it in the law. Mm -hmm. And then truth tends to win out. Truth has since won out in sexual harassment scandals at CBS, NBC, NPR, in Hollywood, and beyond. And while progress is never easy, it's worth it. Like the film depicts, there was that moment where I looked at Yardley and said, no. You know, and that's, that is my greatest hope, right? Like, she's so beautiful in the truest sense of that word you know, and so optimistic and hopeful and would never in her wildest dreams believe someone would do this to her. And I do feel like 
thanks to all of the women who have come forward, and men too, we're at least closer to preventing that from happening for her. That's it right there, right? What, what more can you ask? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. So great to see you guys.